Hello, my name is Dean Contover. This is The Current Buzz. Thank you for watching today. Today we're going to uh, talk about a little sports. John Boswell has come from the University of Massachusetts, and he's going to talk basically hockey, but he probably will talk about other sports. You, you also have a good a new sports director, right? New athletic director. Yes. Athletic director. And John is the associate athletic director and marketing and promotions. Is it's that a, correct? It's a, it's a mouthful, right? Yeah, exactly. We can't, can't even get it on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's how bad it is. All right. Uh, welcome to the show again. You've oh, been here before. Always great to be here, Dean. Yeah, thank th you for having me. Yeah, no problem. We, we love having you. Um, we're going to talk about Hockey East. Uh, the UMass Lowell team that's in the area uh, that everyone goes to see. It has a venue of what? What's the? Uh, what can Six, it hold? Six thousand seats. Six thousand seats. Uh, he's here to sell you tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, how do we get tickets? Go, go riverhawks.com or okay. songacenter.com. Okay. Box office will take care of you. Okay. Uh, UMass is in Hockey East. Uh, all, Considered one of the better uh, divisions, or in you can get their standings and where, where uh, UMass is. Uh, we haven't played. Uh, I say we UMass hasn't played a uh, hockey East game yet. It's coming up, Correct, right? Yeah, we'll, start, we'll start here at the back end of October. So, what's the record now? As of now, we're off to a three and one start. That's so, good. So we, Better than last year. Same, same as last year. Oh, so same as last year. But we split with a, a tough Minnesota Duluth team. Uh, you know, team they are, they are tough. One yes. of the better programs in the country. Yeah, that's correct. And we swept Colgate here on homecoming weekend to start the season. So we're off to a nice start, scoring a lot of goals, keeping goals off the board. Uh, you know, we got early in the season, but we lead the league or lead the NCAA in power play and penalty kill. So the special teams have been very special to start the season. Yeah, uh, what was it that that you they had it in today's paper that you were the best power play percentage uh, in hockey East? Is that is that yeah my in, the, in the NCAA right now? So oh, in, the, in, in, in the NCAA in NCAA yeah. So the team Which, the team has found some success finding the back of the goal on special teams on the man advantage, but also killing the penalties. Uh, okay, the year. that's what special teams means, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, the man advantage, in other words, is uh, usually four against five. Correct, yeah. And uh, you score when they're down four Cor guys. Correct, right? yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm You're picking it up, together. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Hockey East. Uh, what are you ranked in Hockey East at the beginning of the season? Where did they rank you? So we were, we were picked ninth this year. Ninth. Um, Out of how many teams? Eleven. Eleven. Ooh, that's not good. Yeah. In ninth, one spot, eighth, and the other. So... We have our work cut out for us, but you know I think uh, Coach Bazan will tell you he always likes to defy the predictions, defy the expectations. Hmm. Um, last year was probably one of the worst seasons. Is that? It was, right? a it was a tough season. The team got off to a good start, and then uh, the injury bug hit and just compounded itself one after the other. Uh, but it, you know, I think the teams moved forward. They think they like to say last year was last year. Mm -hmm. so yeah, this year. So they have a good leadership group this year. Um, you know, we returned. One of our captains, Ben Meehan, came back for a fifth season. He's a graduate student this okay. year. And one of his co-captains uh, is a graduate student from Colgate, Pearson Brandon. So two graduate students joined by senior Owen Cole. Gives us a strong leadership group. Uh, why can uh, graduate students play a fifth year? What's the reasoning? So this is the last year you'll see that. Um, every, okay. Everybody who played during COVID uh, got an extra year of eligibility. Oh, that's cool. So, so if, you, if you were playing that first year, which Ben was a freshman, he could play that fifth year. Um, and you see a lot of students taking advantage of it to, to get a graduate degree um, and, and gives it a little bit, play a little bit more college hockey. Okay. Well, that's understandable. And plus, uh, you have more experience under your belt in regards to the pros, right? Correct, yeah. So uh, when you look at our defense core, we have seven regular defensemen, five of them are graduate seniors, or graduate students or seniors. So you guys should do very we have well. A very strong, experienced core. Right. Uh, last year, you didn't have scorers, right? You didn't have snipers, as they call it. Yeah, we, 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 str we struggled to find the back of the net last year a bit. Yep. Uh, so I think it's good to see a, a fast start this year. Um, you know, a couple of exciting freshmen that Coach, uh, you know, has, has called attention to. Chris Delaney is a freshman from Hopkinton. Uh, I think he's got three goals out to shoot. Yeah, he uh, does. I did, he's, I he's did see that game he's, against he's, uh, uh, Minnesota Duluth, he is, which he, is a great team. And he was very uh, fired up to score. Yeah. I, he was very happy. I, yeah. I noticed that. He yeah. went back to the bench 
jumping up and down. Yeah, he's he's five seven, but he plays like he's six four. Uh, well, that's that's, he, that's all he's you need. He's got quick hands and he's been a strong performer. Uh, Scout Truman, who's a junior, has found the back of the net in each of the two series. Uh, and then freshman wise, I think Lee Parks and Lee Bornemich are two players to watch out for. As, as is that uh, Bornemich? Is that the uh, Slovak player? It yeah. is, yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, I hope he does well, and I hope he likes it here that he brings more Slovakian or, or Czech players to play yeah. for, for UMass Lowell. We've, we've been very fortunate. We've had, a, we've had a lot of success recruiting internationally. Uh, we've been very strong in Sweden, uh, and you know we've had Latvians. Uh, Libor, Libor is going to give us another dimension there. Yeah. Um, yeah, you had a lot of Swedes. You don't have any of this year, do you? Uh, Isaac Johnson, one of our Oh, Swedes Isaac defense. Johnson. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's good that you recruit. It used to be you used to recruit Canadians. Yep. But yeah. You mean you, we still we, do? We still do. You see, you see a lot of parity on the roster. I think uh, I forget what it is. It might be eight or nine different countries are represented on on the roster. Oh, no kidding! That many? Yeah. Oh, wow! Wow, interesting. Now you had uh, a hockey get together before the season. What was that called? Yeah, so we do a summer social every year. A summer so, social. So our season ticket members can come meet a oh, okay. new team. And this year was more important than ever. We had 15 first-year Riverhawks. Uh, so a chance to meet the players, to connect with other Riverhawk fans, and get together. It's a way for us to show appreciation. Um, you know, we have about, of the 6,000 seats, nearly 1,500 of them are season tickets. Uh, we have a very strong season ticket base and people who support us year in, year out. Uh, so it's just a way to say thank you to those folks and let them connect with the team, connect with the players, and, and really make uh, those new bonds leading into a season. I see. And it's just for uh, season ticket? Correct, yeah. All right. Uh, would you have that for just regulars? We, we try to differentiate it. We, we do invite some, uh, some other folks who maybe aren't season ticket holders yet but are looking at season ticket. Oh, leaders. I see. Some of our group leaders. So, so we mix and match some others in there. But it is generally a, a, an invite invitation event. Uh, because it's a nice treat, a nice perk to have in that season ticket membership. I see. 1,500, that's not bad. No, no, it's a, it's a good number. You know, season tickets are always a challenge. If In an ideal world, you want to be probably closer to 2,000. Uh, and we were right there before COVID. Uh, and it's been a slow build back since COVID. But. All right. Well, if you want season tickets, go online and uh, look uh, for season tickets. I don't know how much they are. You know, uh, you, sa you, you save almost 65% off box office prices with season tickets. So, and, and how many home games do you have, have roughly? Eight, 18 this year. 18. So you have 18. It's not every weekend. Um, you know, if you have children, it would probably behoove you uh, to get season tickets. We do a great job. So the, the whole package is the idea is you never waste a ticket. So if you have season tickets and you can't come on Friday, but you can come on Saturday, you can trade your Friday tickets into another game. So you're never wasting a ticket. So you really maximize that value. And we have a lot of fans take great advantage of that. Pop. I see. I see. And you could just come up. You could be a walk up yeah. and buy tickets oh, of also. Of course. Yeah. Right. Um, there's a, a thing called Military Tex, T-I-X. Uh, it's an app. Vetix. Vetix. I'm sorry. Uh, it's an app. You can go online and yep, we pontificate on that. Yeah. Way. So we donate tickets. Vetix has been around for for probably about a, a decade and a half now. Oh, has it been it's that? A it's a national program. How come I didn't know about it? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so they, they they do tickets to events all across the country, and whether it's season ticket holders who donate tickets they can't use or tickets we provide from the athletic department. There's always tickets available uh, for veterans to claim at no cost for them and their family. Is that anywhere or is there a block where they would sit? Yeah, so it depends on the game. On the game. Uh, and, on, and if it's donated by season ticket holders okay. or whatnot. But yeah, there are, there's tickets for just about every game available. Okay, if you're a veteran, it's a thing called VetTix, T-I-X. It's an app that you could uh, get online and, um, not online, you could uh, download through the Apple Store. Yep. And, um, of course, you have to go through the rigmarole of password, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and uh, you could get uh, tickets to basically any end venue in the United States. Yeah. I mean, I think there's hundreds of venues that are, that are part of the program. So it's a wonderful program to, to, yeah. to say thank you to our vets. Now, can you just get one for the veteran? or could you, Nope. It's, it's meant to do with tickets for your family. Oh, for the family. Yeah. So, in other words, you can get four tickets? Is yep. that? Oh. Correct. Oh, cool. All right, that's, uh, I didn't know that. So, I mean, it's good to know. All right, so um, 
We talked about tickets. Anything else you want to talk about tickets or season tickets? That you yeah, play? no. So, I mean, it's, a, it's an exciting season we have planned here. So we, we are, we're on a little break here with road games, but uh, we're back at the Songus for BU on November 9th against the top-ranked program. BC comes in in the first half, uh, ranked currently number one in the country. So you're seeing all these top-flight programs in Lowell and, you know, the march towards the postseason tournament, the Hockey East Championships at the Garden, and ultimately the Frozen Four is our goal. Yeah, BC and BU, I mean, I mean, they're basically a professional teams. I mean, all these guys are drafted uh, for the NHL, and they have like 10 or 15 guys on their team that are drafted by... It is, it is, and it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough. difficult. So, you know, it's, it's always exciting for us to go against those teams because it shows the value of a team versus talent. And uh, sometimes team versus wins out over talent. And, you know, we take great pride in that. So it's great to see some of those teams come in. You know, last year, BU came in with Macklin Celebrini. He was the number one pick, uh, the San Jose Sharks. He's already playing for the Sharks in his first year. Uh, and I think you see that talent level, uh, but we always make it tough for them, uh, whether it's... Yeah, you guys do uh, always make it tough for them. So uh, Christmas is coming up. If you're thinking of getting tickets, and I'm not talking about lottery tickets, I'm talking about tickets to the... Uh, <clears throat> UMass Lowell hockey game, you could get tickets, right? You could course, go down yeah. to, to the ticket office and you don't have to pay the... You don't pay the online fees. You yeah, online fees, there, exactly, yeah. right. So so definitely drive down. I, I think the box office opens at 10 in the morning. Yeah, 10 to 4 every day on Monday through Friday and then open on game days. Yeah, so, I, you know, if you're looking for a, a, a surprise... Uh, a ticket we have after Christmas. Um, there's games. Um, there's Simon Fraser. Simon it, Fraser. That's a Canadian college. It's the only NCAA school in Canada. Is that right? That's true. It's an exhibition game. Though. It is. Yes. All right. But January you have Maine. Who's you in have the top ten? Yeah, lately, right? Yep. Lately, Maine has been. Yep. A, a, a Very surprise. Strong. Yeah. Stonehill. A new program, second year, uh, yeah. Second year, so um, Providence. Providence, always so, tough. So yeah, Merrimack, Vermont in February. Uh, Merrimack, Vermont, in Northeast in February, and in March, um, UMass Amherst in New Hampshire. New Hampshire's starting to be tough lately. Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's no easy nights in college hockey. From one to sixty-two across the the platform, anybody can beat anybody. Okay. Uh, I think you saw Lindenwood, who started their program just a year ago, knocked off Wisconsin, who's a top 20 team on opening weekend. So the parity in college hockey has never been stronger, um, which means that a true national championship is really up for grabs every year, okay. which is a great thing to say. National champion, it's a thing called Frozen Four. It's going to be in St. Louis, in St. Missouri. Louis. Correct, yeah. And this year, and I think next, the following year, I think it's Las Vegas. Las I, Vegas, I, I, correct. I, so that's always our goal. Everything's happened in Las Vegas yeah. now, right? Sports uh, mecca of the world. Almost. Exactly, almost, right? Uh, and, and it never was, but that's yeah. because there was gambling and they didn't want that to be involved in sports. The cat's out of the bag. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Thanks for the Supreme Court. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so the goal is to go to the Frozen Four. Correct. How do you get there? So uh, you want to be one of the top 16 teams in the country. Um, the top 16 in the pairwise, which is a part of a, a complex ranking system, are, are the, that's the tournament. Now, teams outside the top 16 will get in with an automatic qualifying bid. So you really want to be in that top 13 or 14. You get an automatic bid if you win the Hockey East Championship. If you don't, you need to be in that top 13. And then you need to win two games at a regional, an NCAA tournament regional. To get to the first, and usually that's up in Manchester. So it varies. There's four sites. Um, Why isn't UMass Lowell one of the sites? So we we uh, wouldn't be a neutral host. So Manchester's a neutral host. Oh, I uh, see. No I, get, I understand. Okay. Yeah, so, so uh, you know. Well, they have they play some of the UNH games up there. Uh, at the SN, SNHU Arena. Yeah. Uh, no, they're all, all the all UNH is at the at the WIT. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. I'm. It, they okay. have in the past, though. They okay, the past, all right. You're not, you're not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so it, um, you know, you got to go to those regionals. You got to win two, and that gets you to the Frozen Four. Okay, Frozen Four. That's the goal. That's always the goal. The goal is the goal is so, working towards championship. Um, every is it Monday? There's a ranking in the paper. And, yep, correct. U, uh, USCHO.com. Pardon me? USCHO.com is, is where you find it. Okay, or, or, uh, I'm thinking of the paper, yep. right? 
Uh, usually people pick up the Monday paper because yep. they want to see the rankings of the colleges Correct. in regards to football yep. and, and the rankings in, in uh, hockey. Um, you want to be in the top 20, but you want to be in that top 13th, 14th Correct. in the ranking, right? Correct. Uh, I hate to ask you, what's, what's uh, UMass low rank right so, so right now we're just outside. We're, tw we're, we're receiving votes, so we're the 22nd team right now. Okay. So, um, so early in the season, we're right on the cusp. Yeah, so if you beat BU... Uh, you would probably be projected in there. I, I think so. We yeah, we have a couple games before BU. I think if you win both of those, you're probably going to be in the top 20. Oh, I, good. That would be good. A uh, couple of questions. I think I've asked you this before. How's the portal work? And explain the portal. Uh, sure. They have that in football, college football, and, and hockey and other sports in the NCAA. Yep. Explain the portal slowly so people can understand <laughs> the portal. Yeah, so, so college sports are essentially year-to-year -year free agency. Any player can, can put themselves into the transfer portal. Um, so it's both a win for teams and a win for the student-athletes. Uh, student-athletes looking for a new opportunity, they can go find that opportunity. If the schools are looking to buff up their roster with uh, upperclassmen, that opportunity exists now as well. It'll change a little bit after this year. This is that last year where you have that fifth-year grad student. Um, so you'll lose a significant portion of the transfer portal. <coughs> Um, but we've been very active from, from hockey to basketball, baseball onward uh, in the portal and in, in using it as a tool to enhance our roster. Okay. Um, people leave the uh, UMass to go to another college. Yeah. Uh, they feel that they have a better chance of playing more, presumably. Correct. Sometimes it's a, they're looking for a better chance to play more. Sometimes they're looking to be closer to home. Other times it's they're looking to expand that, especially now with that fifth-year grad degree. There's some guys who are looking to do that somewhere else so they can get a specialized degree that maybe they can't get at UMass. Oh, okay. All right. Um, these are the cards that they have. Yeah. Uh, this is last year's pack. At least you have the date on it. Oh, yeah. Uh, 2023, 24. Um, team set. Yep. So we'll Usually do, it's not open. We'll do the same thing again this year. We'll have those for the first 1,000 fans at the exhibition game. On December 29th, first time in. Oh, I, I, so you get people that come in the door on the yeah. exhibition game. Yeah. It's a good timing because it's a 3:30 start, so good family day. Oh, it's a 3:30 start. Yeah. Why? Because these guys have to take the bus up to Canada again. So, no, it's more. It's more, they play actually. I think they're playing UMass Amherst the day before, so it's a good chance for for us to get a game in to get our legs right. We actually go to Palm Springs, California for a tournament. Uh, we fly out on New Year's Day. Um, so it's a good chance to get your legs right after the Christmas break. After the well, what tournament is that? Uh, so that's the Palm Desert Classic. It's the first time it's ever happened. Oh. Um, UMass Lowell is actually the host, and it's at the Acrisure Arena. They Palm will Desert. be the host from now on, is it's that? For this year. And oh, for this year. So it's a two-year tournament. Will this be televised? Uh, so it will be streamed online, not televised locally. Okay. Oh. All right. What, do we know the dates roughly? It is January 3rd and January 4th. Okay. We'll play Michigan Tech on uh, the third, and then the fourth will be the winner of Holy Cross and uh, Nebraska Omaha. Are you going there? I should be on that trip. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice and sunny. I hope so. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, that's, Don't tell my wife. That's one of the <laughs> that's one of the benefits, right? Hey, you know we we have a strong travel contingent coming out, so I think we have roughly 150 to 200 uh, Riverhawk fans, whether it's traveling out or coming from the local uh, market. How do they get tickets for this, this Palm? So, so we're planning uh, events through our alumni office. So our UMass Lowell alumni office has registrations for everything from golf to pregame receptions. Um, and then the tickets are through the Acrisure Arena uh, website. Oh, okay. So um, let's talk about something else, baseball, baseball cards, spinners sure. baseball cards, right? Let's talk about a guy named Mookie Best plays for the Dodgers, right? Sure. He was in Spinner's packet. Uh, what year? I believe Mookie was 2012. What's his card worth now? Huh? I, I think I, it, if you have it graded, you know, if you get the professional grading service, I think if it comes out as a 10, it typically will sell for somewhere in the north of $500. You're kidding me. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a packet... I forget who the player was on the front. Uh, Devin Marrero was Devin Marrero. Look at your spinner's packet. Mookie Betts is in there. That card, and I'm sure it's in mint condition because it's in the packet, 
right, is now worth close to $500. And he's not even in the Baseball Hall of Fame yet. Not yet. He'll be someday. Yeah, he will be someday. And it's too bad we traded him, but that's another story. You uh, never know what you're going to see in Lowell, you know. Lowell, Lowell's had Major League Hall of Famers, NF, NHL Hall of Famers. You never know. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that is true, okay? So um, are any of the games going to be on Nesson this year? We do. Have, we have, so we have two home games on Nesson. Uh, the Saturday, January 11th game versus Maine uh, will be a Nesson game. Okay. And the regular season home finale uh, versus UNH, which is March 7th, will also be on Nesson. Wow, okay, only two. So we have two other road games that will be on Nesson as well. Oh, okay, all right. So if you can't make it, right, um, please watch it on Nesson. Yeah, and all of our games are on ESPN+. Plus. So you, you, if you have an ESPN Plus subscription, if you have it as part of your Hulu or Disney bundle, uh, <laughs> you can always just say UMass Lowell Riverhawks into your remote and I'll pop the, pop the game. Someday I'll have to... Uh, 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 have you in and explain Disney Plus and Hulu and all those? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's more more subscriptions than you know what to do with. I, I know, and and the, and the, it piles up. It you does. Know? It I mean, does. It may be nine dollars for a month, but it, if you get the second 10, cable bill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. God. So, all right. So we talked about the portal. Um, do, do do any of the students get uh, a scholarship? To play hockey? Yeah, so right now, um, hockey is an equivalency sport. So there's not a full scholarship for everyone. Basketball has 15 roster spots, 15 full scholarships. Wow. Hockey splits up roughly 17 scholarships. Um, so that gets distributed amongst the team. So some guys might have a full, other guys might have a partial, some guys are walk-ons. Um, so it varies by athlete, and it varies year to year. Um, so there's other ways that student athletes are also getting compensated now. Um, you know, they, there's something called the Alston Grant, which student athletes are eligible for, which is up to $5,500 a year, uh, which schools can pay into. And UMass Lowell does pay our hockey student athletes um, that Alston sum. And then there's NIL, where student athletes can get NIL deals now. Um, it, what's NIL? So NIL is name, image, and likeness. So up oh, until okay. In other two words, years so they ago, have a T-shirt? Yep. Up until two years ago, they couldn't take advantage of that. Now they can do those type of deals as well. So across college athletics, you see, see things like collectives, um, which are group, you know, used to be a booster or would hand the cash to somebody after a game. Now it's kind of organized. So, so we do have a collective. It's called the Mill City Collective, uh, and it does support both our hockey and basketball programs, uh, and it's hoping to expand to support all of our athletes. How is the basketball uh, program doing? So our basketball team has been to the American East Championship in three out of the last four seasons, uh, which means you win that championship, you're in the March Madness, you're in the dance. Oh, wow. Uh, we've come up short. We've gone up to Vermont. So our goal is to host that tournament this year, um, you know, and to host it, you have to win the regular season. So our goal is to win the regular season, and we're going to do that by playing all of our home games at the Costello Athletic Center. Oh, okay. So it's been a nice Not at the Sanger Serena, no basketball there? No, no men's basketball this year. We will play one field trip day uh, game for women's basketball there. We bring 4,000 community school, school age kids out oh, to cool. game, which is a great day. Yeah, yeah. Um, but men's basketball will have the entirety of their home schedule at Costello, where they've only lost once in the past two seasons. Oh, wow, that's interesting. That's very interesting. All right, I'm a student at UMass Lowell. Um, I want to go to a hockey game. Do I have to pay to go to the game? Absolutely not. All athletic events are free for UMass Lowell students. You simply show your ID, you get your complimentary ticket as you arrive at each event. Okay. So they just have to pay for hot dogs and hamburgers or drinks? Yep, whatever they would like that. Yeah. Or, or, or pizza. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. You don't have sushi there yet, do you? No sushi, no. Oh, uh, that's too bad. Oh. Uh, yeah, um, I'll tell you about the venue. That, I mean, the uh, I had a hamburger. It was okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> They're always working to make it better. All right, that's a, that's a good right. answer. I love that answer. All right, is there anything, I have a minute left. Is there anything left that we didn't touch? No, I mean, I think Chelmsford in, in the greater Merrimack Valley, especially this audience, has been phenomenal in supporting the Riverhawks, uh, whether it's Chelmsford Schools, Chelmsford Youth Hockey, we have a lot of local connections here, and we're always so fortunate to see those folks at games. So we want to be truly the Merrimack Valley's team. So that means being Chelmsford's team. That means being Lowell's team. That means being Drake's team. Uh, and you know, these type of things give us the opportunity to do that. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, that's that's good. So um, if you're interested in buying tickets, uh, Good seats. Make sure you.